All right, good morning, First Christian Church family. And it's good to be with you here on Sunday, March 22nd. This is the fourth Sunday of Lent. And the church has said for many centuries that this is Refreshment Sunday. This is a Sunday when we pause in the long march to Easter to um, remember what Jesus said, uh, that those who believe in me shall not die but have everlasting life. And we hope that in this time together that you will experience uh, the blessings and the abundance of, of Jesus Christ of grace and peace and love. I have to my right here with me this morning, uh, Reverend um, David Hargrave. And David, it's good to have you here with me, helping me. Uh, David here. recently called as our interim associate pastor. And uh, you have a long history of um, uh, in ministry, many churches throughout Texas. Yes. Bring a wealth of experience. And you've already been a help to me just by being present with me. And uh, David, this morning, will give us uh, our call to worship and lead us in a time of prayer. As we prepare for that call to worship, I will light our candle, which, of course, for us signifies the presence of God in our midst. And appropriately, our call to worship will be Psalm 23. A highly appropriate psalm, seeing that it speaks to us so clearly and it is such a favorite psalm for so many. But also because it happens to be the lectionary psalm for this fourth Sunday of Lent. So I invite you, where you are, to say with me in whatever translation you have learned the 23rd psalm, as we call ourselves to worship. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Would you pray with me? O oh God of the quiet places, God of the stormy seas, we gather in your calming presence this day. Silence the crashing waves of trouble in our hearts. Let us hear your promise to us in Jesus' whispered, Be still. And in our stillness, let us know within ourselves that you and you alone are our God. We pray this in the name of Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And, and forgive, forgive us our debts, trespasses, as we forgive our debtors. Our debtors. And lead, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This morning's meditation uh, is taken from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, uh, verses 35 through 39. Now I want you to listen now for the word of God. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him in the boat with them, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care that we're perishing? 
he woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. I am told that the Sea of Galilee is notorious for storms that come out of nowhere. Perfectly calm one moment, frightening squall the next. And in this sense, the gospel story speaks to me. You and I are living in a fearful time. We're in the middle of a terrifying storm. A few weeks ago, the storm seemed very far away. We were living our lives as usual. And then with suddenness, seemingly out of nowhere, a terrifying storm emerged. And today we feel engulfed. What are we to do in the middle of the storm? You know, left to our own, we're likely to do what the disciples did. They were astonished that Jesus could sleep at a time like this. And in these days of COVID-19, some of us can't even sleep because we're worried about uh, that we may go under. Mark says Jesus was at the back of the boat asleep on a cushion. The winds were howling. Their boats were filling with water. It felt like no matter what they did, the storm would overtake them. They woke Jesus and began to press him to do something. And I hear our anxiety in their words. Teacher, don't you care that we're perishing? My word to you this morning is that Jesus does care. He understands that the waters of life are threatening to submerge the safe places of our life. He understands that sometimes, no matter how much faith we have, we're weak and frightened, that we can't always see the end of what threatens us. I want you to acknowledge those feelings. I want you to find a loved one today, a friend, and, and share exactly how you feel. I don't want you to give in to those feelings, but I do want you to accept them and not run away from them. Denying scared feelings only makes your fears bigger. But then I want you to do something more. I want you to see Jesus with you. I believe he's here. I see Jesus and all the dedicated doctors and nurses who are reporting to work as usual to keep us safe and well. They are signs to me of Jesus' presence in the storm. I see Jesus in a little Italian village apartment. One of the apartment residents was celebrating her 90th birthday, and they couldn't get together, so they had a piece of cake delivered to her front door, and just as she opened the door, they all stood on their balconies and sang her happy birthday. I see Jesus in their spontaneous outpouring of love. <laughs> Mr. Rogers once said, when I was a boy and I would see scary things in the news, my mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You'll always find people who are helping. I think these helpers are loving presence of Jesus in the storm. They're always there. I think Jesus puts them in our lives. You are not alone. Sometimes the storm seems very long. Days stretch into weeks, weeks to months. There's no sign of letting up. And, and sometimes it may seem as if Jesus is taking too long. He's not. I called a dear member of our church yesterday on the occasion of her 90th birthday. And I asked her what she wanted for her birthday. And she said, I would like the isolation to go away. And then she added, but I have lived through hard times before. And then she began naming all of those hard times, the Great Depression, World War II, the Korean War, Vietnam, and all the turbulence of the 60s, 9-11. And then she said, now this. We made it through all of those times, and we'll make it through this. You and I are going to make it through this. We'll make it through this because we'll find the gift of Christ's peace in our most difficult times. We'll find the strength of Christ when our anxieties threaten to overtake us. We'll find the wisdom of Christ when we're faced with decisions that have no easy answers. The very best news I can give you this morning, the gospel good news, you and I know how the story is going to end. The same way Mark says it ended for the disciples. The storm came. Their fears rose, Jesus spoke, peace be still, and by his power and might, the wind ceased, and there was dead calm. It will happen this way for you and me. In the meantime, have faith. 
Jesus is with us in the storm. The waters will not overtake you. The winds will not scatter you. The prophet Isaiah put it this way. But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, don't fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. And when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. Will you pray with me? Dear God, I pray that, that you would be with each person who listens with David and me this morning. I pray for our church family, for all of those who are uh, feeling the weight of being alone, who cannot reach out and touch those whom they love. I pray that you would be presence to them. I pray for all of us who have fears, some too deep to name. And I pray that you would hear us when we pray, uh, that you would hear our sighs too deep for words, and that you would draw all of our prayers up to you, and that you would answer them in your kind and merciful ways. We pray for frontline workers who are putting their lives at risk to help all of us who need their help so desperately. May you encourage them this day. And I pray for each of us to have a little sign of your hope in this day. Lord, the storms make our boat feel very small. Would you be our large and empowering presence among us? In Christ's name, amen. Amen. As we prepare this morning to engage in the most significant part of our worship for we as members of the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ. I was reminded in thinking about this time of a book of, of meditations on the communion on the Lord's Supper by Joey Jeter at Bright Divinity School. A gift to all us pastors as we each and every Lord's Day prepare for communion. In this particular book called Remembering, Joy talked about that word, remember, which we use each and every Lord's Day as we partake in the Lord's Supper. Thus we remember Christ. And he pointed out that the word, when you divide it up, is remember. To bring together again what was separated. And I proclaim to you this morning that that will happen as Dan has talked about. We will get through this. God is in control. And we will remember as a congregation and the church at large. Thanks be to God that we can remember at this time. As I share with you the words of institution now, I invite you where you are with the elements that you have prepared to share with us in the Lord's Supper. For on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and after blessing it, he broke it. And he shared it with his disciples, saying, This is my body, which is to be broken for you. Do this and remember me. Also, after supper, he took the cup. And after blessing it, he shared it with his disciples, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood, which is to be poured out for you, each time you drink of it, remember me. May we all share in God's love and grace.
Would you pray with me, please? Beautiful God, we give you thanks that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the promise and the presence of Christ. Strengthen our faith, O oh God. Increase our love for one another and send us forth into the world in whatever ways we can, in courage and in peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray this in the name of our Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us this Sunday morning. And as we leave you this hour, I'd like you to receive this blessing. May God's Spirit surround you and those whom you love. Rest now in that calm embrace. Let your hearts be warmed and all the storms be stilled by the whisper of God's voice.